Well, here we are at last, everybody. Welcome back to Cheap Pop. I am your host, Derek Kirby, and today we are finally ready to tackle the mysteries that remain for John Carpenter's The Thing. So in the third act here, you're going to notice things get extra crazy, that it's more difficult than ever to track things beat by beat. Obviously, that is an intentional decision by John Carpenter, keeps the mystery fresh and alive because characters will frankly vanish for time periods at a time, and you just have to try and piece together with more deductive reasoning than ever what happens to them while they are off screen. Does anything happen to them while they are missing? Those are some of the questions we're going to answer today as we wrap up this series. So, without further ado, let's get started. Here is another important detail here. From here, we have real importance stressed on shot composition because if you look at this hallway, it's very easy to confuse what you're seeing. You get a tracking shot in the hallway We've had this perspective camera shot before. In the first minutes of the movie, this was the dog thing moving through the film. It was the thing's perspective. Now we seem to be having that again. You see the stairs downstairs to the generator room. You see a door on the right. It's wide open. You see ahead of you another room. Childs is standing across the corner. You hear footsteps. Childs, we're going out to give Blair the test. If he tries to make it back here and we're not with him, burn him. Childs turns. It's just McCready again. This was a red herring that threw me off in previous viewings. Previous viewings, I thought this was all signs pointing to McCready actually being the thing. Keep in mind that tracking shot that I just described. McCready tells Childs that the others are going to go to Blair's tool shed and they're going to test his blood next. Childs acknowledges and his only instruction he's given by McCready is if you see Blair, torch him. At this point we see McCready, Nalls, and Gary go to Blair's room, but look at this! The door is wide open, could only be open from the outside they tell us. And look at that! No Blair. Where'd he go? Now here's my theory, nobody talks about this, and this is purely inductive reasoning. I believe that the other half of Dog Thing, which disappeared at the start of this adventure six days ago, I believe that it has been digging this tunnel. Because Blair has only been locked up for about two days. So how in two days did he get turned and as a human with human physiology, dig down through the floorboards into a cave and the batshit crazy thing, so they find these boards, they go through this tunnel, and there's just an effing cave down there. Oh, but that's not enough. The thing is building a damn spaceship. Now you saw earlier on in the film, after the autopsy, you saw McCready go to where the, the Norwegians had these videotapes that told them there was this giant alien spaceship and you saw the block of ice that they found the alien in originally, and so they go and investigated that. Well now, Blair thing has apparently been using parts of the helicopter to manufacture his own UFO. It's not complete, it's basically just a frame at this point. But you're wondering, how the hell did he do all this in six days, let alone, excuse me, two days, let alone if he had the full six? It doesn't make sense how that could have happened, and that's just a suspension of disbelief you have to accept. We get another interesting shot here. We get almost a relay of that previous hallway tracking shot from the perspective of we think the thing. Only there's no footsteps now. We see the staircase down to the generator room. We see the open doorway, but oh, it's light in there now. It's light. Oh my God, Childs has gone from his post. Snow is blowing into the room. There appears to be a door open behind him that's lit up too. Oh my God. This is a theory that people have. This is a very popular theory, which I wholeheartedly believed as well until my friend Matt made me realize the floor plan and showed evidence to me to the contrary. This is why I know we have it right and everyone else got it wrong and this completely changes the ending. The expectation here, the belief 
is that the thing, whether it was Blair or Dog Thing, which no one talks about Dog Thing, so they thought Blair, came down, went around from the generator room, up the stairs, across the hall, and then into the room connecting behind Childs and got the jump on him because he's sleep deprived. Because hey, they just showed us he's sleep deprived. He's falling asleep on his feet. Flamethrower or not, it got the jump on him. People then cite clothing continuity. In the first shot when McCready went to talk to Childs, you had the same number of coats, but they were some different colors and they were arranged differently. So the belief was the thing took Childs over, tore through his coat, and the other matching blue jacket that was on the hook before is now gone. There are other people who speculated in the final shot that Childs is wearing a different coat, but he's not. You can see now on the Blu-ray release, it is the same coat, it's just covered in a layer of frost, and the orange tint of the shot from the fire at the end really obscures this as well. Before they blow up Blair's ship and shack and tool shed and all of that, they see, rather Null sees, Childs run out into the snow and he calls out to them, Childs just left his post. Seconds after Childs leaves his post, the lights go out. Childs tells us later he believes he saw Blair and that's where he goes. We'll put a pin in that for now. Let's go back to that floor plan. It does not lay out the way we're told it lays out. The open door on the right before Child's room? That's the storage closet McCready broke through. And why don't you see it? Because Child's chopped the damn door down. There is no door. But what about the open door behind him? How do we know that the thing didn't come through there? Well, we, while we don't know what that room is, if you actually go back and look here, this is McCready trying to get into this room. Now it's dark. Again, there's no light in there. Door hinges. Right there. Boom. Door hinges. The door was open the whole time. We don't know what that room is. It's irrelevant. That room there does not connect with this room. It is, it is trying to lead us to believe that Childs has been turned because that feeds into the paranoia at the end of the film. At this point, McCready makes up his mind. We are going to burn the whole facility down. We cannot let this thing get away. All it wants to do is refreeze in the ice. So they drive the wildcat into the facility wall. They're dousing kerosene everywhere. They are lighting up this son of a bitch. They're gonna destroy the entire base. But as they go down, they go down into the generator room to investigate the lights being turned off. The generator's gone. While they're looking around, Gary is suddenly singled out and attacked by Blair. And keep in mind the accoutrement sound here. It's the same sound that swiped by Fuke's face. Who's that? This strongly suggests that it was Blair who got him, but I submit that it's not. I submit that it is the thing, but it's not Blair. I think it was Palmer the first time, and I think it's Palmer who planted the ratty McCready jacket to try and frame him because it knew he was the biggest threat. He was holding the group together and leading them against the creature. So here's another interesting misdirection here. You notice this is in addition to being a horrifying way that Gary is assimilated. What do you notice? The creature is adapted. It's not tearing through clothes anymore like it did with Bennings, like it did with Palmer, like it, well, it didn't really tear through Norris's clothes, but infecting that way. It grabbed the face and now he's dragging him away by the face. The clothes are intact. So would that submit maybe that Childs was turned? Again, had we not just talked about the floor plan angle, I believed it really did, that that suggested that Childs was turned, not in such an obvious way for them to see. What about the misarranged jackets and boots in that room? Again, I believe that could just be a continuity error because if it was an actual physical altercation, my belief was that the thing trying to potentially hide what it's done just put them back and didn't know exactly how they were set up. But again, I think it's a continuity error based on what we know now about the floor plan. They don't connect that way. No matter what, you're going to think Childs made a questionable decision and you're going to be intentionally suspicious of him. So Gary is assimilated by Blair thing. Nalls then wanders off. This is another mystery here because we don't know what happens to Nalls. And unfortunately, 
Knowles was going to have the most epic death scene in this entire flick, and because of budgetary reasons, they were robbed of that. The film had $10 million budget, and they didn't have the time or budget to do this. He was going to go, he was going to see a glimpse of Gary twitching as he was still fighting off assimilation, head that way because he didn't know what he was seeing, and get ambushed by Blair as well and assimilated. He was going to then break through the floorboards in front of McCready before the actual creature itself broke out, and he was going to basically have these tentacles bursting from his mouth and neck and face, begging for help. He's still human. McCready is helpless to save him, and then the creature was going to break up through his body. Just would have been savage insanity. Again, easily would have been the most memorable, horrifying scene of this entire flick, but we don't get that. We do not get that for budgetary reasons, so he kind of wanders off, disappears, and we're just led to believe he's dead, which I guess, I mean, he is, but we're just led to believe he was caught and assimilated off screen, which, you know, that's a bummer. So McCready, now left alone, has to try and destroy the place. He sets up the dynamite. He's got all these Molotov cocktails. Keep in mind, I think this is another continuity error, the Molotov cocktails. They're the green bottles that he was drinking from at the beginning, J&B Scotch is a sco single malt Scotch whiskey, and they don't have the labels on them anymore. Why? I don't know, I think it's a continuity thing. This is not kerosene, this is not gasoline. This is Scotch, it's still a Molotov cocktail. Creature breaks through the floorboards, sweeps away the bottles and the plunger he was going to do to detonate. He does a fancy little cartwheel to avoid it. Creature, as it breaks through, you see everyone's eye is drawn to the T-Rex looking mouth. Look to the left side of its head. Blair's face. Then the chest opens up and dog thing comes out. Boom! More support for my theory of the other half of dog thing being there in the background operating this entire film. Because again, the thing has its own intelligence. It, it, yes, it takes on a person's memories and emotions and all of that, but it's still its own intelligence as well. So I think Dog Thing was operating in the background, probably already working on that ship. How, whether or not it was who infected Blair or if that was Palmer, I don't know. Again, Palmer was running around for a while, but I think Blair was locked in there. So you would have had to have stolen the keys another way. I don't think that happened probably. I think it probably was Dog Thing coming up from the bottom. But I digress. You got at least a three in one here. Of course, really more than that. That's why it's so big because you at least got Gary and Norris, or sorry, Nalls as well. So you got really four things wrapped up in here. Four different things. The Uber thing, if you will. McCready does his little cartwheel tumble, little somersault there. Nice. We see McCready staggering about after this. I believe he is drunk. He's holding a bottle in his hand, his J&B scotch. He sits down in the snow, starts to raise the bottle to his lips, and then he hears Childs behind him. He turns around. We have an interesting exchange here. Childs asks him, are you the last one left? That dialogue, I love that. The way it's worded is brilliant because Depending on what you think, you see this line meaning so many different things. If Childs is human, 
Are you the last of us? Are you the last survivor? Because I know you were with two other men. Are you the last one left? If Childs is infected, are you the last one? Are you the last human? Are there, is there anyone else that is my enemy in this case? And if you're neutral, agnostic on this thing, are you the last one left? You clearly just had some great battle there with a creature, with the thing. Are, are you, you the only one left now? The only surviving thing left in this entire encounter? It's pretty good writing, man. Pretty good. So here's the discussion. Is Childs the thing? He abandoned his post. He tells McCready that he thought he saw Blair and he ran off, got lost without a line. And it's true, he was not following the line to navigate between the buildings, but that's suspicious. I mean, I guess the big fireball in the sky would have been easy for him to navigate back, but I don't know. He picks up on the fact that McCready is somewhat untrusting on whether or not Childs is infected. If you're worried about me... Have we got any surprises for each other? I don't think we're in much shape to do anything. Their facility is destroyed. They have no means of leaving. They have no alternative but to freeze to death. Childs has a flamethrower here. This is key. Childs has a flamethrower. Nothing, however, for McCready. What does this tell us? This tells us if Childs is infected, he could just torch McCready right here. Why wouldn't he? Again, I mentioned earlier the clothing continuity. On the Blu-ray release, you can see Childs is wearing his blue jacket. Now, there was a second blue jacket, that is true, but as then I talked about the floor plan, I think that also breaks and dismisses that theory. It no longer works because, as it turns out, the moment of attack that we projected doesn't seem as plausible now. Sitting on this and enjoying these final moments of life, McCready offers a bottle to Childs. And then, this is again very key, Childs without hesitation takes the bottle, takes a drink. Now people speculated for a long time, fan theories, that this was gasoline or kerosene that he gave to Childs and the alien, not knowing better, drank it. Blah! Garbage. Makes no sense. Here's why. Again, perfect replica. Cellularly identical has human taste buds. It would know gasoline. It would know the smell of gasoline before it took a drink. So people project it as like, Child's taking the drink and McCready's laugh being that McCready knew that he was the thing. And again, I wanted so bad to ascribe to this theory because I see the symmetry from the very beginning of the film. We opened the film with McCready sitting in a shack playing a game of virtual chess and he's playing against this computer basically and he's, he's cocky. They're literally making chess moves, and the whole movie has been a chess board until now between him and the thing. And so the belief was, just like the beginning of the film, when McCready makes a cocky move and is like, <laughs> you're getting slow in your old age, talking shit to the computer, the computer then goes, boom, checkmate. McCready, sore loser he is, opens the panel, dumps his drink in, shorts out the computer. What does he say? She's a bitch. It's so perfect for if Childs is infected and if McCready has somehow proven that in that final moment, giving him the drink, literally giving him the drink, seeing that Childs is infected, it would be so perfect for McCready to be proven right that Childs is the thing here and it mirrors the beginning perfectly, cheating bitch. Why? Because McCready just killed like five things all at once, leveled everything. There is nothing else in his at his disposal to fight or kill. And how did the thing preserve itself? It took its one pawn off of the board. That would be brilliant. I mean, I would love if that were the case. But again, if Childs is infected, he's got a flamethrower. McCready's got nothing. And if it's just the two of them, which he just confirmed himself, why wouldn't he just light up McCready there? Why? There's no need to be deceptive anymore. Now, conversely to my theory previously that McCready was actually the thing at the end, I pointed there to him basically having no defense. Childs is human, McCready is not. I believe this said that McCready has no defense 
unless he turns childs in a subtle way. Single particle, because I contended that if McCready was the thing that he would have been turned potentially by Blair's Smirnoff bottle when he took a drink, although that would also then make me have to adjust my timeline for when Blair got infected as well. But with that being the case, I guess you would have to say eraser to his lip. And with that being the case, McCready is beat unless he turns Childs the way he was turned. Giving him the bottle, Childs takes the drink, and we get that sound, that accoutrement. Oh, it's so good! It's so good, it immediately diffuses whatever you think. It immediately makes you question everything because it is an ominous sound and it happens at that moment. Why at that moment? Is it a red herring? That's hard to see, but you know what? It damn well might be. It might be. And that is why I love this film. I've gone over this thing dozen, a dozen times now. I have reworked my theory from every angle but with, with the actual physical breakdown of the scene and the layout of that hallway, I now no longer see how Childs could have been infected. There's no moment earlier on except one. And it's a little bit of a reach. I said it earlier on, and that first night before the dog kennel attack, that Palmer, he got attacked that night, I believe, and turned. But I made a point, or rather I forgot to mention, I glossed over it because it wasn't important until now. He's roommates with Childs. Palmer is smoking a joint early in the film. He takes a toke. He passes to Childs. Childs takes a toke, passes it back. If, 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 and again, I still think there's too much evidence that goes to the contrary, but you could say super convenient slow burn, and then you can connect it to cheating bitch, which I really, really want. That's a reach, but I feel like the most, I feel like this is an Occam's razor thing here, man. I feel like thorough analysis of the scenes, of the shots, and the logic and deductive reasoning we've used, I think it tells us the ending with neither man being infected is correct. I think because Carpenter went with this ending instead of a... He had an alternate ending, which thankfully they didn't choose, where McCready survives and he's flown out of there by a rescue copter. I hate that. I hate that alternative. It's better with this. It's so iconic and ambiguous, so brilliant, because as I just demonstrated here, you can go down the rabbit hole either direction or you can go with the most likely scenario, I think, and that is that neither man is infected. Again, I said when Childs ran out earlier saying he thought he saw Blair. Keep in mind, we also had dog thing at that point. You had two things. One of them is behind him because he immediately shuts off the lights as soon as Childs walks out. And we don't see dog thing until the very end in the very climactic battle. I say climactic battle. It's about five seconds. They Again, they ran out of money and budget, but it's still memorable as hell for practical effects and all that. So I don't know, man. I don't have a perfect, I don't have a perfect answer, but I have a 95% certain answer. First infected, Norris, then Palmer, then Blair. Wild card, dog thing, free the whole time. Sabotage the blood bank and tried to free, frame McCready multiple times. Palmer. Fuchs killed himself. Breath theory, garbage. Eye gleam, ooh, I didn't mention eye gleam. It only works, I tested it out. It only works in the blood test scene there with Palmer. Palmer's eyes don't have a gleam, but throughout the rest of the movie, Palmer and Norris have eye gleams and we know that they're infected, so that's out. And finally, I don't know why I did four and four, by the way. And finally, we have the infected question. The clothing continuity, the positioning doesn't hold up perfectly, but for what he's wearing, it holds up. And finally, who's infected? 
as bad as I want it to be otherwise, I think the answer is neither man. Because I cannot accurately tell you. I can, I can defuse and draw into question and undermine every answer. Because I can answer the floor plan question, I have a hard time saying definitively that Childs was infected. I can see if I wrote the thing, why I would be tempted to say it, but it just depends. And of course, you could always just go with what the screenwriter said. The screenwriter himself tells you when he wrote the final scene, he envisioned both men as still being human. Carpenter, he's Carpenter has been a troll, man, his whole career. He doesn't care to know the answer, and so he's told in some interviews, yeah, McCready was the thing. In other interviews, ah, child, yep. And then other times he's told you neither. So it is what it is, but that's that's gonna wrap up this movie, guys. If you have not seen John Carpenter's The Thing, forgive the fact that I just spoiled the fuck out of it for you. I highly recommend seeing this film. Uh, I was able to get the Blu-ray for like 10 bucks the other day. Fantastic watch. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, I might go watch it again before resuming uh, the three-part series here. For part two, I will be coming back for the 2002 sequel. Yes, it is a sequel, a video game called The Thing. I addressed before, for some reason this series has no originality in its titles. The original is called The Thing. The sequel set 20 years exactly in the future. The PS2, Xbox game, The Thing. And the 2011 prequel, The Thing. And the prequel tackles the Norwegian camp. So we're going to continue then with The Thing. I'm going to play the game again. It does answer certain elements and certain mysteries from the film. Love letter. Great love letter uh, to the series and to the film. I love this game. I'm sure it's going to be a bit dated since it's 2002. But I'm not, I'm not even worried. I remember it plays kind of like Half-Life. So I think I'll enjoy the hell out of that. And uh, for part three... Because I think the prequel was kind of garbage, I feel like there's so much better that could be done with it. So I'm going to give you a quick, re like, review, general review of it, and then I'm going to dive into part three, a entire how I would have done it better. Basically, I'm going to rewrite the entire screenplay, and we're going to say how it would have fit better than what they gave us. But that's all my time for this video, guys. I know this has been a very long video, but again, this is a very intricate in-depth series that had to be picked apart had to be thorough so for now that's going to do it for my time if you like this video don't forget to leave a like below comments as well let me know do you have alternate theories do you like other theories that i presented or others that you would like me to explore also if you can please take a moment to subscribe to this secondary channel of mine cheap pop it is a new baby little channel out there examining film gaming, and other general pop culture news. It is not where sports is going to be. Sports is going to be separate and by itself. That's going to be the Dallas prospect. But I want this other element here as I eh, eh, try as I try to get this one over the top. Uh, if you can, support it. Greatly appreciated. That's all my time, though, guys. Until next time, I don't have a tagline for Cheap Pop, do I? Hmm. Fuck. Well, what do we do? Why don't we just wait here for a little while? See what happens.